Hello and welcome to Comp 101 for the Fall 2013 semester. Uh, the way this class is going to go is every week I'm going to release a video, uh, audio file, and a text file that goes over the material for the week. The way those are going to be set up is the first section is going to talk about uh, any questions that have come up, like re recurring questions primarily, um, or anything that seems like it needs clarification. I'm going to do a recap of what we covered last week. Obviously, that doesn't apply this week since there was no last week. Um, and kind of give an overview of what we're going to talk about this week. Um, this week, we're going to basically talk about how the class is going to run, the syllabus, some stuff with Google Docs, uh, Blackboard, and Safari Books Online. Uh, currently, I don't have access to Blackboard and Safari Books Online due to the fact that the semester hasn't started yet, um, But those, so those videos might be a little bit late. Um, they will, however, come up as soon as I can. Uh, so a little bit about me. Like I said, my name's Drew Clinkenbeard. Um, I started my college career with computer information systems at Victor Valley Community College in Victorville, California. I then transferred to California State University Channel Islands where I majored in computer science with a minor in math and applied physics. I stayed on at Channel Islands where I got my master's degree in computer science. I am currently in a PhD program studying computer science education. In addition to that, I've worked as a software developer, um, various other things in the computer industry. Right, so about Comp 101, this is an excellent class. It as computer literacy is the actual title. It basically covers topics in computers ranging from web apps to databases, programming to presentations. It I think is a very important class. I think everybody should take it that's not in a dedicated like computer science or IT field, primarily because the field of computers and technology advances so fast it's almost impossible to stay up to date with it unless you are actually actively pursuing it all the time. So let's go ahead and jump right in to go over the syllabus. Now I've emailed that to everyone so you should have access to that. It's also available on Blackboard as soon as you can get in there. So let's see, I'm just going to scan through this. Um, Comp 101, Computer Literacy, Fall 2013. Uh, I'm Drew Clinkenbeard. You can see the my email is drew.clinkenbeard at csuci.edu. I'm also available via Skype at drew.clinkenbeard. Uh, the office is online. This is an online class. I actually live in Claremont. So, uh, I won't be on campus. The office hours uh, will be online, and we'll go over that a little bit more in a few seconds. Course meeting is online. It's an online class. Textbooks. We're going to go over Safari books online. We're also going to use various papers online and online articles. Um, you can see Blackboard for more information. That And that Blackboard CI Learn will be the course website. Why I like this course. I've already kind of gone over this. It serves as an overview of computer systems and the knowledge necessary to get the most out of these useful tools. Um, it's covers interesting important aspects but you can probably read that um, how to contact me this is an online class like I said so I won't be on campus however I want to establish some times and I'll be available via Google chat or Skype uh, that's actually one of the first homework assignments which we'll get to later uh, is kind of letting me know when your preferred time for office hours are and then I will update this document as well as some information on Blackboard. Um, outside of whatever times we establish, uh, email is by far the best way to get in touch with me. In fact, a few of you already have. I will always endeavor to get back to you within 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, so if you have any issues with assignments, the schedule, anything, email me. It's best to be proactive. Let me know right away if you have an issue. It's much better to do that than to wait until the last minute. Um, if you see me online outside of office hours, feel free to ask me questions. Um, Google chat will be up and Skype chat as well. Uh, course description from the catalog doesn't quite apply to us because it says three hours lectured in the lab per week. That doesn't really make sense. I'm not actually going to record three hours worth of video or audio. Um, primarily, I'll record some and then there will be exercises for you to do if, um, and that'll take up those three hours. 
It says this is an introduction to computer applications, including web applications, word processing, spreadsheets, databases, and programming. This is not open to computer science majors. <clears throat> Upon successful completion of this course, you will be conversing computer systems. That means you'll be able to talk to people about them. Uh, you'll know how they're put together, how they're set up, that sort of thing. Understand and make use of online resources. So cloud computing, Google Docs, web-based email, that sort of um, resource. Have a basic understanding of computer security and what it takes to stay safe online. This is pretty important to me. I want to talk about basic password security and staying safe online. I kind of feel like the internet is a giant community full of interesting and sketchy parts, just like a city. Uh, I want you to have a rudimentary understanding of computer programming. Now, this is not a programming class. The goal is not to get you to be able to write code for a living. The go goal is so you can understand how coding works so it doesn't seem like magic, which honestly, it still seems like magic to me. That's one of the reasons why I like it. Um, understand some of the language and tech terminology associated with computer systems. This is pretty similar to be conversant in computer systems, but instead of just knowing sort of you know windows versus mac versus linux that sort of thing it's to actually know memory versus storage why flash drives are cool that sort of thing course workload this is a three unit course so they always say to allow for three like three times the number of units that many hours a week to work on the class so that would mean nine hours a week um, I say you should budget two and a half to three and a half hours of time for reading, watching, or listening to course material, and five and a half hours on homework or projects each week. Uh, spending time throughout the week working on homework and class assignments is critical for a successful learning experience. Now, I know how much time it takes you will, of course, vary. Some of you might be familiar with many of the topics we're going to cover. Some of you may have never seen them before, so it will take you more or less time. Um, that's really up to you. It's best to budget more time than less because if you end up not needing all the time you can always use it for something else. But if you run out of time, well, unfortunately time travel doesn't quite exist yet. The student evaluation structure. Course grades are based on your performance on 10 homework assignments, 3 quizzes, and unfortunately 2 tests. I know nobody likes them, but they're helpful, believe it or not. Each homework assignment is out of 35 points, each quiz is out of 100, and will focus on topics covered in the preceding homework assignments. So basically the quiz is going to ask you very similar questions to the homework assignments, but you're probably only going to have one chance at that, at getting those right. Um, the details for the quizzes and the tests and the homework will be provided as they are assigned. There is a midterm and a final and those are both cumulative so the midterm will cover everything from now until the midterm and the final will cover everything from the beginning of the semester to the end. Now this is super important and I cannot stress this enough the questions on the midterm and the final will be drawn from the homework and the quizzes so be sure to keep track of those and you understand those. The syllabus then has a nice breakdown of the homework points, the quiz, so to sort of verbally go over that, the homework is worth 350 points in the class overall. Each quiz is 100, the midterm is 150, and the final is 200. So the lion's share of the points are from homework. There's a breakdown of the grade, so A, B, C, D, F. Uh, an A is 1,000 to 900, B 899 to 800, C 799 to 700, etc., etc. Um, there's also a nice little pie chart. Now that's actually one of the things I want to try and go over in this class is the creation of a document like this. Um, so the table indicates the total points needed for each grade and I will assign plus and minus grades in this course at my discretion. Homework is due by 11.59 p.m. on the Sunday after it has been assigned. Assignments must be turned in via CI Learn, Blackboard, unless otherwise noted. A late work will not be accepted. Now, if I continue having issues with Blackboard or if there's some kind of problem getting the homework up on Monday, I may extend the due date, but for the most part, uh, be aware that 11.59 Sunday is the deadline and after that you won't be able to complete it. Collaboration policy. Now working with fellow students is encouraged. Any course benefits from the active exchange of ideas and this one is no different. Um, each person is responsible for their own solutions to various assignments. The few online classes I took benefited greatly from study sessions. Um, there are also additional 
resources for help. Um, you can go, you can find me on Office Hours. There's tutoring at the Learning Resource Center, tutoring at the STEM Center, and there are computer science tutors. Those are that's those are all excellent resources. And like I said, it's really good if you can get together with some of your fellow students and actually have study sessions. Uh, that's a great way to learn the material. Um, let's see and going on more about office hours students who make use of office hours tend to do better in college courses my students tend to be pretty bright and dedicated so oftentimes they'll make use of office hours most of them do and those who don't usually do all right but not as well as the ones who make use of outside resources um, accommodations this is pretty boilerplate Cal State Channel Islands is committed to equal educational opportunities for qualified students with disabilities in compliance with Section 504 of the Federal Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disability Act ADA of 1990. The mission of Disability Accommodation Services is to assist students with disabilities to realize their academic and personal potential. Students with physical learning or other disabilities are encouraged to contact the Education Access Center or EAC office at 805 Four three seven three 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 one for personal assistance and accommodations. That information is in the syllabus and also on the website. Information on the syllabus is subject to change. If I do change it, I will let you know in class and I will highlight the necessary changes in the syllabus. There, will, I'm going to be as transparent as I possibly can. Academic honesty. This is straight out of the course catalog. Um, don't cheat don't invade false information or citations, don't plagiarize, uh, and don't help anyone else commit acts of academic dishonesty. Basically, the work you submit for credit should be your own work and reflect your understanding of the course material. Group work, collaboration, and the free exchange of ideas are fundamental aspects of an academic environment. I encourage you all to talk and work with others in the class, as it will enhance your understanding of the material. You must write up your assignments individually and explain solutions in your own words. It is also important to cite resources you used in work. These may include other students, books, websites, and instructors. And in that vein, I have to say, this syllabus template was designed by Dr. Jeff Buell, who teaches at Channel Islands. If you ever get a chance to take a class from him, you should do it. He is an excellent, excellent teacher. Right, that covers the syllabus. I also want to talk to you a little bit about how the homework is going to work. Now the homework is going to be all through Blackboard. So you'll sign in, there are questions to answer or tasks to complete. Uh, this week there are some multiple choice, true, false, matching questions, things like that. Also one project where you are going to create a document in Google Docs and share that with me. In addition to these homework assignments, there's a survey every week. Now this survey is very, very important. This survey is your method of controlling the class. Through this survey, I will change and modify how I'm teaching and what I'm teaching. This survey lets you dictate what topics will be covered and how they're covered. So it's very, very important that you fill this out. Now, most of my students fill it out, and they're very happy with how the courses go. Uh, so I'm sure you know, you'll find it. Uh, just as fulfilling. Now the little catch there, the little gotcha, is in order to get to the survey you have to do the homework. You have to complete the homework assignment in order for the survey to become active. That's my little, I don't know, um, my little inspiration to get you to do the homework. Um, anyway, um, so that's it for that and now we're going to go on into the next section where we're hopefully going to talk about Safari Books Online and CI Learn or Blackboard. Uh, if I don't have access to those yet we will definitely go over Google Drive, some keyboard shortcuts um, in both browsers and Google Drive and creating documents, editing them, sharing them, um, all things dealing with word processing.